testimony is bogus. But, but, still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What did you say? What do you say to that, Miss May? Oh, what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to admit nothing in your, to please admit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I promise to be a good girl. I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did see everything, I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. She hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did! That, that clock, um, the kind of statuary clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does that actually my report not startle you? How'd you know it was a clock? I see. Only... I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. I did see everything I did. So, you saw me then too? Of course. I remember that spiky hair anywhere. Spiky. The witness will refrain from personal attacks on the defense attorney. Ah, uh, it was bad girl. I'm Sally. Very well, continue. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran to the right. Is that right as in your right as you look from the window? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right, it was my right hand. Right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. How convenient for you to remember her hippie clothes. That's what you, I mean, that's what she was wearing. Oh, and her hair was all done up like a bun. What happened then? And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. Where did this weapon come from? She picked it up from the desk. I see. What sort of weapon was it? That that clock. That kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. A clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lori. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. That clock... Yeah. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty, Mr. Lawyer. You said... Ju you just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Er Another person in the much same... And another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. Order, order, Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, er. Ruben saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught my murders with these questions before. Murderers. Well, only once. Abduction sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Ooh, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it. It saved the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fei and Co? No. Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Fei and Co where the murder took place is very close to the hotel. She would easily have heard the call. Man, you can't open no windows in the hotels. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, no. No, Your Honor. Can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Couldn't have wrong. Your Honor, members of the court... It's inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. 
How could you possibly? Just take a look, right now. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. Couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? Well, Miss May. Tisk tisk. Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. You knew the clock was empty? Somehow we knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Oh, well, Mr. Wright? Can you prove when the clockwork was removed? And the voice recorded call. Oh, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was moved is... Double check... Uh, yeah. Take a look at this. That's a very cute cell phone. Woohoo, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this is my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? This, this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel better for the big fellow. Let's hear the conversation. They just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then. If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I have to take out the clockwork, sorry. September 5, 9, 27 a.m. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear the clockworks are already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at the hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I go to so many. Ooh, I forgot. So the women had seen it before, that would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yeah, cause it's fucking custom made, bitch! The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce the evidence that will prove the witness has not seen the clock before. It's simple. This clock was never in any store. Ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything is in s everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> oh, excuse is not on sale today. Damn, this guy got him. Got him. Ah. Oh shit! Ew. Oh, damn. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it. She should die for it. Die! Oh, whoa. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Oh? Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> silly me. Did I, um, like... Lose it? I guess I did. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. 
Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She had heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There's no way she could have known to think it was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Oh, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence of proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Have a look at this. The, that I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim Miss Mia Fay's phone, were you not? Ooh, ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping your phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. Proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock. Right there. Didn't they present this ready? I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. This one wants more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Hey, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the statue of the thinker and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I, I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer. It's no fair. All of you gang up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal with the final blow. Miss May. What is it, you little shrimp? Talk to me in that tone of voice, will you? You killed her, didn't you? Order, there will be order. What? How can you possibly say that? Are you mad? All I did was a little wiretapping. Oops. So you admit you tapped her phone. But wait. I didn't do anything bad like murder. I'm a good girl. Really? Can you prove it? No way, can you prove it? You think you're so smart, Mr. Lawyer, but I can prove it, and I will. Can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. I want to assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmm. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from the sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quickly, the ice melts and you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So, where does that leave us? It is my good displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, this is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands, she was a defendant 
she saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. There's no way I could win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Call the bellboy as a witness. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk him quite low enough already. I dropped uh, calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fey. That is my condition. What? Find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Set, man. Let's do it! Alright, we have nothing to lose. Except for... Well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Cool. You fell right into my trap. Very well, the court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. Happy to be of service. The tea set looks rather heavy. So without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gate Water Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin this cross-examination. Right, I'm ready. So why did she specifically ask for the nine? It can prove Miss May was murdered or was involved with the murder now. Maya will be finished. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them. And I... Ooh. Ahem. The point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. <laughs> Nine on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She's watching a program on TV and then wished to drink after she finished her. Nine, the time of the murder. I brought it to her precisely... I'm a quest. Precisely 9 then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May is quite insistent that it be brought. Oh, and Bellboy, tea had like, like iced coffee at exactly 9 p.m. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of 9, sir. Why would she be so particular about that time? I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. Are you sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir, it's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with an embrasure. Embrasure? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. How would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was a momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never forget. Never ever forget, sir. That was pretty fishy of me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bell bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is that it? Tisk tisk. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. 
It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. Can't let this happen, can I? Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This is shr the charade of justice has gone long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay, this is really it. Now, this is my last chance. There was two glasses on the table that we saw when we went into the room. Who the fuck was the other person? Tell me again about her room service. You can answer? Exactly 9, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. I guess I requested iced coffee. $18 was the charge, as I recall. I see. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know. And we don't skip on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, oh, er, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were. you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the er, barista there, Mr. Edgeworth, who. He asked me not to mention if it was if I wasn't specifically asked her. You fool! Gotcha, bitch! I've done it! I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we've just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hope that it is impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Your Honor? As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. That Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one in the else in the room at the time of the murder. Why? What a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like to like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the old other man from this court. Oof. Upstart amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all for today for the trial of Maya Fay. Court is adjourned. Mr. Wright, you're amazing in there. R really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, the other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? A face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips? It sent shivers up my spine. If you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that? Anyway. I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. We want to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. 
Texas. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. Thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. The victim dodged an attack but ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. So let's save. I think that is a good place to hold off. So I hope you guys have been enjoying. Uh, these games are really fun. Uh, again, pretty simple. I mean, they give you all the chances you really want to correct yourself. But again, still fun. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.